Hello, everyone, and welcome to Communication Law, Ethics, and Diversity. I am Dr. Carolyn Walcott, and I will be taking you through the paces this semester. I know most of you may be asking the question, why is this course now required? Why should I be taking Communication Law, Ethics, and Diversity? Well, the answer to that is quite simple. If you are going into a career that is germane to advertising, public relations, blogging, whether it's news, whether it's social media, you will all need to understand what are the legal imperatives behind speech. What are the ethical ramifications behind what you consume or produce as persons who are involved in engineering the news? If you're in the advertising field, you need to understand the ethical dimensions of advertising. And so it's very all encompassing that we understand together what are the legal and ethical requirements of the careers that you're choosing. And of course, diversity fits in in the sense that you're checking to see exactly how do the media represent diverse cultures as part of society. And so that in a nutshell is the reason why you are now required to do communication law, ethics and diversity. I want to assure you that this course will be in depth. It will have many moving parts, but it will also be fun and exciting and you will go away with quite a lot of knowledge about how to apply what you're seeing in social media, traditional media, to your daily lives and your future careers. Now, I trust that most of you, if not all of you, have had an opportunity to go through the syllabus. If not, I'm going to share a screen with you at the moment so that we go through the syllabus together. And so follow along if you'd like. Of course, the overview says Com Law Ethics and Diversity. The title of the course is at the top there. It's a free credit course. And so we're meeting asynchronously, meaning that I expect that you will access the content online. Um, you've got to dedicate at least two hours per week to this course, at least I said, because there are many moving parts. And so it's just very important that you set aside some quality time for this particular course. Now, the learning outcomes generally, we, I, I would expect that at the end of the semester, you all can identify and explain the tenets of the First Amendment. So a lot of what you will do in the very first module examines the very First Amendment of the US Constitution. Next, explaining the Freedom of Information Act. This is what um, should be an outcome of your immersion in this course. Then explain Georgia's Open Records Act. Next is uh, the ability to locate and explain a state's law about access to state records. Then identify and explain three ethical frameworks. Analyze an ethical dilemma in mass media and propose a solution. Explain the changing nature of diversity in the professional media workplace. And finally, to identify different approaches to defining diversity in media. Most of your assignments this semester are really packed to these learning outcomes. And so you will find that your very first assignment, which is um, uh, for me to have an idea as to what your thinking is or where your thoughts reside as it relates to what you've been exposed to in the news, much of that I'll expect that you will interrogate at the very first level of discussion for the forum that I've posted for you. And so it is really cultivating that lens of critical thinking around what the First Amendment says about our freedoms, um, ethically speaking, what you're seeing in the news in terms of what is said or not said, and of course, how are those particular issues represented from a diverse perspective. Now, like I said, the modality for this course is purely online. The last time I taught the course, we were face-to-face, -face, but it is now online. And what I'd like to let you know is that you need to be very, very conversant with it well, because much of what you will do will be posted online, and of course, I expect that if anybody has any issues, you will reach out to me via email as soon as possible. And so while you do not have class participation in a seated mode, it is expected that you will sign in, you will do your work online independently. And of course, I will have an idea as to who is actually participating based on the number of visits to the course page. All right. Now, a word on discussions. Please make sure that you are following the prompts very closely. Um, for the very first discussion, of course, you'll have to just introduce yourself and talk about the particular ideas around what you've seen in terms of the legal or ethical or diverse implications of those particular images or news coverage or whatever particular genre you've chosen to actually examine for that first assignment. 
all right? For the discussions, basically what I'd like you to bear in mind is the fact that you're not just responding to a peer's particular iteration or their comment, but you're thinking through very carefully before you submit your own personal comment, all right? So it's not just to say, I agree, but it's just basically to say, I agree because this is my perspective and this is how it is actually shaped by X, Y, or Z reality, okay? So think through very thoughtfully and then you submit your particular perspective. Be courteous and respectful. There will be persons who are actually there um, in the uh, particular discussion forum who may have a disagreement, who may not see the same um, particular perspective that you're seeing, but please make sure that you're remaining as respectful as possible in the process. Now that apart, um, just make sure that you are limiting your particular participation to the time that is assigned to most of the class, to all of the class. If there's anyone who has accommodations, I will bear that in mind. But if you do not have accommodations, you're expected to adhere to the timelines that are assigned to this particular course across all of the various modules, as well as the assignments that I will be evaluating over the course of the semester. Now, in terms of your diversity critique, this is your assignment that you're looking at individually. And what I'd like you to do is select a sitcom, situational comedy, a movie, or a commercial, and you're basically critiquing, or you're analyzing in a critical lens, using a critical lens, the use of characters, language, and other forms of representation that illustrate diversity or lack thereof. Let's say you're selecting the Cosby Show, and you're talking about the fact that the Cosby Show magnifies Black culture, and a, a home that is basically functional, a home that demystifies this whole notion of the dysfunctional Black family. That's an example. Or you want to talk about, you know, Blackish, or you want to talk about something that is like the office. Um, you're speaking to how they're representing race, culture, ethnicity. Um, how is diversity magnified or illustrated in a particular scene or a particular episode of that? sitcom, movie, or commercial. So that there is your diversity critique. Your midterm exam will be based on what we would have done from the first segment, the first module, up until the middle of the semester. That's already posted, so that will be your midterm exam. Um, your ethics in the news presentation, this is a very large assignment. This, this has to do with the selection of, of a mass media ethics-related event that has been in the news recently. Um, you know, something that has to do with, um, you know, the hearings, the January 6th committee hearings, something that has to do with perhaps the failure of, 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 of the um, Speaker of the House to be elected in the first round. We waited until the 15th round for that particular, um, you know, gavel to be, you know, drawn for that person, for, for Speaker McCarthy to receive all the votes that were required to be um, named the Speaker. So, you're looking to see exactly how the coverage unfolded around those issues. You're checking to see exactly how Fox versus CNN magnified the issue. How were they represented? Were they distributed across um, ethical lines? Was there any issue in which there was misrepresentation of one side versus the other? So you're looking at blue versus red politics in media. You're looking to see exactly how some bit of information was made salient to the audience versus another bit of information that was not necessarily made uh, reachable. Um, whether these were particular bits of information that were purposely left out or included to give the audience a particular perspective, you will talk about that in your presentation. Now, you need not stick to television. You can also bring examples of, let's say, New York Times, New York Times versus Washington Post. Um, just look for coverage around an issue that is germane to something that is relevant and topical at the moment as we speak. Um, there is also the Hamlin case, um, the guy who, um, you know, got the cardiac arrest. You can check to see whether the issue of Black, uh, you know, football players, um, how are these issues represented in media? Uh, do, does one particular establishment magnify the causes and the different health effects more than the other side. So this is just an example of what I'm actually looking for in the ethics in the news presentation. And this is going to account for 
um, a good chunk, I would say, I, I would say just about 20% of your overall grade. So you've got to be very mindful of this. I am going to allow students to actually select another or three. So we have a class of just about 23, 24. Um, maximum in a group would be three students. So if you'd like to attempt to do this assignment within a group, feel free to also do so as well. Specifically, the criteria I will be using to evaluate this assignment would be, number one, is the topic timely? Does it involve an issue of ethical concern to mass media professionals? professionals? Is it timely and is it related? Now, if you bring something that has happened in 2018, I would not consider that timely because these are issues that have been gone on in the press. They're not necessarily on the radar, and so we're not going to be able to comment on them because your classmates have got to be able to comment on your particular ethical issues. Now, when it comes to what is happening right now, there are quite a few things in the political domain, in the social domain, in sports and in culture that you can select from. But as the semester goes along, I'm going to be able to give you some more explanations for this particular assignment. When you're actually delivering this assignment, the issue of clarity has to be addressed. The ethical concerns in the particular assignment. A lot of students in the past have done this assignment but they have not articulated the ethical dimensions, meaning is there balance, is there objectivity, is there harm in the reporting? These are actually ethical codes that are found within the Society for Professional Journalists, the guidelines. And so you've got to make sure that you're matching the issue with the ethical codes that exist within those particular guidelines that you're looking at in the context of your ethics in the news presentation. And then finally, do you do a good job managing the class discussion? Since we do not have a class discussion, there is going to be a forum where students will have to give you feedback on your particular presentation. And so I'm going to ask that you stick to the timeline and that there's going to be some particular space that is assigned there for the discussion. So you've got to post your assignment before and then the other members of the class would have to respond to your particular presentation. So make sure that you are on track with your discussion as well as your topic in terms of its relevance and usefulness to what we've covered in the class. Now your personal code of ethics, this is an assignment that is worth just about 10 points, 10% um, of your overall grade. And so this has to do with your own ethos as an individual who will be working or if you've already started working in the field, how has that particular area, that particular profession impacted your perspective ethically? Let's say you're working in advertising. Are you utilizing or applying the Advertising Association of America ethical codes to your own work? Do you seek the truth at all times in advertising? How have you borrowed from or what might you integrate into your work to position yourself as someone who's ethical and who recognizes the importance of ethics within your profession, all right? Three of these particular guides or three of these particular pointers have to be original. So you're deriving them from your own reservoir, your own appeal, your own ideations around what you think should characterize somebody who is ethically minded in the field of advertising. And of course, this is just an example that I'm providing you with. In terms of the length, a two to three paragraph summary of your ideal media or communication related job, and of course, talk about the responsibilities associated with the position. If you're already in the position, then I will allow you to actually explicate or to explain exactly how you have come up with those particular ideas and the ethical standards that guide your profession. All right. So the detailed codes of ethics, like I said, um, or at least most of them should be, you know, addressed within the position that you're talking about. And of course, I will post, I think they're already posted, the ethical codes that are associated with everything. And finally, your reference page should be there. Now, the final component of this course will be your final exam. This will just be multiple choice or true or false questions. It is the same with your exam for the mid-semester, so there is no essay. So the reason why you've got these particular other robust assignments, I'd like to hear and see where you're thinking, what you're thinking about, and how you're articulating, articulating your thoughts around what we have done in the class, all right? So be, just be very mindful 
your diversity critique should have references as well. And I'm going to be looking for your grammatical issues. I'm going to be looking for all the mechanics, um, your ethics in the news presentation as well. This ideally should be a video that you're creating, but I'm going to explain this in more depth and detail later on. And of course, your um, personal code of ethics as well should be articulated in a manner that speaks to the level that you're operating at right now. Now, in terms of the times, um, my office hours, there are times when I may not be there, but I'd like for you to indicate very early if you'd like to meet with me on campus and I'll make myself available. But otherwise, I'm actually available on appointment via Teams or this very platform that I'm using to record this introductory session with you. And this is um, the Zoom platform. Now, your recommended text, I've already posted um, you know, a link to a very low cost uh, version, which is your, I would say, eighth edition. It's still very, very good. Um, it is Media Ethics Issues and Cases. Um, Patterson, Wilkins, and Painter. These are the authors who've been doing a lot of the case studies in times past. And so the ninth edition would be something that is a little upgraded. And I think I have the very most recent edition, which is the 10th edition. And so they'll generate cases that are happening in society for us to actually examine in the context of what is happening in communication law ethics um, and to a very small extent, diversity. All right. So if you go back to D2L, you will notice the link for the text, the required text. It will put you in a very good position if you have a copy of the text so that you can follow along as I lecture um, for those particular issues and cases that we will be examining this semester. Now, your evaluation is divided into, I would say, just about seven components. And so you've got a lecture response discussion forum for each module that will examine the law, the First Amendment, and issues around protected speech and speech not protected. So you'll have a legal forum, you'll have a forum that deals with the ethics of our discussions, and of course you'll have one that deals with diversity. Your news reflection forum is sort of your orientation into the class because I'd want to really understand what your thinking is or your exposure. Just a word of caution, if you're not watching the news, if you're not consuming news, whether you're doing this online or in your homes, please make sure that you're checking to see what is happening across the various networks, because a lot of what you will do for your ethics in the news presentation and following along with my discussions every week, it will rely on your exposure to what is happening right now in the news and in society. So please be very mindful of making sure that you're tuning in, even if it's just three times a week, to see what is happening, whether it's CNN, MSNBC, ABC, Fox News, whatever your preference is, um, it is very, very important that you very media literate, meaning your awareness level is not just at the layman's level, you students of the media. And so I expect that you will have some immersion time with the content so that you can articulate exactly what the responses should look like in this particular course. So that's your lecture response discussion forums. I spoke about news reflection. And then for your individual diversity critiques, which are 10 points, um, you've got to make sure that you're also exposing yourself to some particular sitcoms, movies, pretty much like you've done in media and culture or media industries, but this is more a cultural perspective, looking at it from a diverse um, particular lens. Your bit semester quiz, um, I will, I think there is already as a, uh, posted, it's already in the system, sort of a heads up a guide as to what you should be looking at. Of course, your ethics in the news presentation for 20 points, personal code of ethics, and then your final exam, which brings us to a total of 100. Now, your midterm progress report, it will not, I repeat, it will not reflect 45% of the course grade simply because we would not have gotten to 45% of your evaluations. So please make sure that you're actually there in the system doing your news reflection forum and anything else that is required leading up to the mid semester. You know, realistically speaking, you are not going to be able to see what you're doing or your progress until after your mid semester quiz, which will take us to just about 25% of your total. And of course, as you do your um, particular lecture discussion forums that will tackle on an extra five. So do not be very anxious about that particular grade that you will see there. 
it's just going to be a reflection of what progress you've made from the time you've joined the class. So please be very mindful of that particular um, uh, timeline and what is actually done here. Of course, your last date to withdraw is going to be Friday, March 3, but I don't expect anyone to actually withdraw from this course. Now, in terms of what is actually there on the schedule, uh, you will see a table. Um, every single thing that is listed here should also be highlighted um, on D2L. So I believe that for this week, the week of the 9th to the 13th, um, this is just going to be an introduction to what it is we will be doing. And so I'd like for you to actually access the column on dealing with plagiarism because this has implications for you as students. Um, you will see the shift column as well on journalism education and the very example of Stephen Glass who lied his way through his career um, for many years and he was not necessarily, um, you know, discerned. Nobody was able to tell that what he was actually peddling were falsehoods. Um, with a whole lot of repercussions for the people who were misrepresented in the first instance. So um, just to give you some sort of exposure to what to expect, you've got to make sure that you're accessing the US Constitution and of course the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments should be on your reading list for this week so that you have an orientation to the next class. By next week, we will be looking at how the law is made Article 1 on legislative power, I'm encouraging you again to read ahead so that by the time we get to the particular module, you're very oriented to or aware of the content. All right. So you will notice that for the week, we'll have sometimes two topics that we're dealing with. So again, just put aside some time that you'll be able to follow along in the particular lecture that I'll be posting, as well as stopping and making notes for yourself. And I'll be posting the slides along with the lectures as well. Now, how the law is made will be followed by what is judicial review. Of course, you will learn about the fact that people, um, the lawmakers, they will have to go back in some cases to review based on their powers. And this particular module will tell you who has or who hasn't got the power to actually review the law. In some cases, you may hear terms like constitutional review or constitutional reform. Um, most recently, we've had a situation where the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade. And so the law is usually made really on the floor. And when it's made, it goes to the president who signs the particular legislation into law. Um, if he doesn't sign, it does not become law. And so there are times when the president has veto power as well. So these particular modules will tell us about how the law is actually made. Somebody's tabling a bill and then it's enacted after it's signed by the president. And of course, in some cases, we may have a call for judicial review in the context of how these particular bits and pieces of legislation, how they're affecting human life and people's livelihoods and stuff like that. Now you've got until the 19th of this month as your no-show deadline. So please make sure that you're doing that discussion, that very first discussion forum on your exposure to the news. Now by week three, we're moving to the first amendment. And this has to do with the Bill of Rights. Um, read the entire document if you can, and you will see some cases, some case studies. Bethel School District Number 403 versus Fraser, Tinker versus Des Moines, Independent Community School versus the District. And of course, these particular um, cases will speak to directly what was happening in terms of the applicable laws as it relates to the school district in this particular case here. All right. So we know that the First Amendment really has to do with the freedoms that we enjoy, freedom of speech, freedom of information that journalists hold dearly. Um, we've got the freedom of religion and freedom from religion as well. And of course, freedom to petition our lawmakers as well. So make sure that you're very familiar with those particular freedoms. And of course, then we come to week four for the speech distinctions in the First Amendment. And of course, access and journalistic privilege, Freedom of Information Act and open records. You will note when we get to week four that not every single bit of information is protected. Not everything that a journalist says, well, I have a right to be here, means that they can actually be there in that particular space. And so if you have access to, you can click on the link here, it will take you directly to the Georgia Freedom of Information Laws. And of course, there's a case here, Judicial Watch versus US Department of Defense. These particular cases will give you perspective 
on how this law and how these modules were applied to cases that existed years ago. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So then we move to the other week that has to do with. <coughs> Excuse me, beg your pardon. It has to do with speech on the internet, indecency, and obscenity. And there are a couple of cases here: Packingham versus North Carolina, Ninth Amendment, First Amendment versus Donald Trump. And we know that back in the hearings, we heard quite a lot about what was actually said in the context of using language that will appeal to people to make them or to inspire their actions. Um, we know that there are quite a few uh, descriptions around what happened on the storming of the Capitol. Um, on January 6th in 2021, this year we celebrated the second or we marked the second anniversary of that particular issue or incident. And so what speech should be, you know, trans, you know should, should be allowed on the internet? The questions around um, are internet service providers responsible for language and safeguarding what goes out there? Are they um, liable? Should they be held accountable? And then we go to indecency and obscenity. Um, how should um, people who are involved in social marketing and media send out um, messages? Should children be exposed to indecency and obscenity? And then we've got a few cases where the previous attorneys general of the US on their former administrations have fought the American Civil Liberties Union you know, repeatedly to fight against this whole notion of children and their exposure to obscenity and indecency. And so these are cases that are very real and that in some cases you may find yourself associating current issues with these past cases. Um, the limits of the Federal Communications Commission in the case of the FCC versus Pacifica Foundation, you will hear about how, or you will read about rather, how those particular cases um, panned out or evolved over time in the context of indecency and obscenity and where we are as a society at the moment as it relates to what we see and are exposed to as consumers. Um, then we go to week six. And so this is week five. Week six really has to do with libel and defamation. We will be looking at those two particular issues uh, very closely, New York Times versus Sullivan. Um, in the context of what constitutes libel, libel we know is that which is actually written and defamation, well, Libel covers defamation and slander. You can defame someone by what you say or what you write. And so libel laws cover those particular issues, slander and defamation. Um, and so we will speak more about that in the context of what the law permits or does not permit. So once again, like I said, you can actually defame someone's character by slanderous words by a broadcast, or you can actually defame someone's character by written or libelous particular, um, you know, formations about the person, things that are not necessarily truthful. And then very closely related to that, in that particular week, we'll be looking at privacy. And there are quite a few cases there in the context of how can someone be a public figure and still really, you know, um, consider themselves to a private life. It is just very, very almost impossible so to speak in terms of expecting some modicum of privacy as a public figure. We're, we're going to talk about that as well for this particular week. And then we move over to ethical philosophies. This has to do with the cases now. And so I'd like to encourage you very early to make sure that you're obtaining the book. Don't wait until the week of the 20th or the 24th of February to get the case studies. Make sure that you're getting those case studies early to have a look at them so that you're following along with the ethicists and the, the very early ethical philosophers who appear in this particular text here. Moving right along in the text, we'll be looking at objectivity next. Again, we're looking at another issue there in terms of irresponsible reporting. When is a reporter objective versus when they're not objective? And then, of course, in that very week, we're also looking at undercover reporting in terms of some of what was actually done um, in the context of the police working with the media in undercover reporting and the like. We have a breather in the week of the 4th to the 10th. That will be your spring break. And then we come right back to examining third party evidence and loyalty and conflict 
of interest. Immediately after that, we into your mid-semester test, and then we move to person of interest, the Richard Jewell study. Um, this is a case that actually happened right here in Georgia. It happened downtown Atlanta um, during the time of the Olympics. And so uh, you will be very familiar with this particular case. Uh, most of you may be too young to recall, you might not have been here as yet, but um, you know, this is something that really made the news consistently. And it, at the end of the day, costed a particular person their life and their livelihood as a result of how he was actually tried in the court of opinion based on the coverage. So we're looking at, we're looking at person of interest and special victims for this particular week of March 20th to 24th. Quite a lot of readings to, for you to catch up with. And of course your discussion forum is due at, around that time. And then we move to social media ethics, photojournalism, advertising, and case studies we're looking at, and then we go to public relations, then diversity in front and behind the camera, and then your ethics in the news presentation. All right? So it's quite a lot. Don't be daunted. This is a very rich course. And so um, I would expect that if anybody has any fears or concerns that you will reach out to me um, very, very early where this particular course is concerned. Um, there's a general policy that you need to abide by. All of these are self-explanatory. Most of you, you know, are familiar with your seniors. You should be seniors. You should be familiar with the particular expectations in the university policies in terms of turning in assignments and stuff like that. If you've got missed work, I need to um, actually know very early as far as possible. Um, when it comes to complaints, there's a way in which you need to register your complaints. You discuss with me first, and then you actually go higher than me, um, which is really um, with the chair of the department um, before you jump to somebody very high, all right? For students who need help, there's always the writing center. Um, and of course, everything else is self-explanatory. So I wish you all a very productive semester. And like I said, this is just week one. By the end of this week, you will find your lecture for the very first um, session, which deals with how the law is made in judicial review. I shall do that particular lecture and post that so that everybody has an idea as to what to expect for their second week. And so again, if you've got any questions after this particular introductory um, session with me, please do let me know. And I really look forward to a really productive semester with everyone who is actually enrolled in Home Law Ethics and Diversity.